brothers and sisters in Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Life from Karbala with me, your host, Ahmed Ali. Uh, for the dear viewers who didn't get the chance to view the previous episodes, the previous two episodes, uh, we've been discussing and examining as well as com comparing between the justice and the genuine respect of Ali ibn Abi Talib to the citizens and the declaration of the rights of man and of the citizens of 1789. Um, over the past few nights and two nights, we examined the sayings of Amir al-Mu'mineen and compared those sayings to the French de declaration. As a matter of fact, yesterday, uh, we examined the way of ruling of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace and blessings be upon him, and compared his ruling with the rest of the rulers um, and uh, the caliphs who ruled the Muslim world after Prophet Muhammad and Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him. Um, however, tonight, inshallah, uh, we will discuss, um, we will further discuss the topic of human rights. But first, let's welcome our very special guest who has joined us uh, over the past two nights, Sayyid uh, Mudaffa al Qazwini. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidna. Alaykum. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, we're approaching Eid, Sayyidna. Inshallah. I mean, Have you uh, bought Eid clothes? Inshallah. Uh, <laughs> so, inshallah, uh, it's, it's, it's very busy in Karbala, especially uh, between uh, Bain al Haramain, between the two holy shrines of Bain al Hussein and Fadl Abbas. Uh, Sayyidna, uh, yesterday uh, we examined the ruling of Ali ibn Abi Talib, and uh, it's, uh, it wouldn't be, it, it is safe to say that we came to the conclusion, um, but it's, uh, it's really clear that um, Ali ibn Talib's ruling was based on justice and equ equity. Um, <clears throat> but uh, the fourth article that inshallah we're going to examine tonight um, states that liberty consists of doing anything which does not harm others. Thus the exercise of natural rights of each man has only those borders which assure other members of the society the enjoyment of such rights. Uh, these borders can be determined only by the law. Uh, yesterday, we saw that Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him, was the only ruler who gave freedom and liberty uh, to his citizens. Um, we examined the, st the story of Talha and Zubair yesterday and over the past nights uh, when they entered to, uh, to Ali ibn Abi Talib and uh, desiring to acquire um, political Power. position. In, in the ruling of uh, Ali ibn Talib. Um, so when he saw them, um, he extinguished one candle and lit the other. Um, so they, they, they were, you know, kind of shocked. They came, they came and asked him, uh, can we speak to you? Yeah. Told them, one second. well, you have to speak about, does it yeah. concern uh, the, the matter of the Muslims mm -hmm. or is it a personal question? Yeah. They said, no, it's a personal question. Yeah. So the Imam turned off the candle and when they asked him why he turned off the candle, he said, because it's bought, it's bought from the public treasury, from yeah. Baytul Mal. Mm -hmm. So if you're not uh, speaking to me about the interests of the Muslims, mm -hmm. then this needs to turn off. And actually they sat in darkness in some... Uh, yeah. And he lit another uh, narration. He lit another he candle. He lit another candle that belonged yeah. to him, not yeah. to the Baytul Mal. And he Mal. said, uh, I, you know, I... Uh, Lit this candle because it's bought from my own pocket. When they saw this, they just left without saying any other yeah, word. They, they saw they how seen, strict he was. Yeah, they, they, they seen the equity of Ali ibn Abi Talib, uh, peace be upon him. Uh, but Ali ibn Abi Talib, as we mentioned, um, he knew that Talha and Zubair uh, were leaving to Basra to uh, to gather a war. troops, troops, yeah, and, and mobilize uh, troops against them. Uh, definitely, uh, but uh, liberty in this article. Um, how does it compare uh, with the, the liberty of Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him, and the freedom of Ali ibn Talib? Well, first of all, uh, you know, every human being is born free. Mm -hmm. By nature, every single creation is born free. Mm -hmm. Every human feels freely, thinks freely, speaks freely, acts freely, unless he or she is forced otherwise. Mm -hmm. Correct? By a force that eradicates his or her freedom. Definitely. 
And Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu wa salam understood this. He understood it fully. Thus, he gave them the ability to roam freely. Uh, inshallah, we will uh, compare the words of Amir al-Mu'mineen today to the fourth uh, article and see how Amir al-Mu'mineen's words compare. And how Amir al Mu'minin gave liberty and freedom to his uh, to his citizens and the pe people he ruled over. You know, not just human beings, even the sun. When it beams, if there is no barrier, freely it will beam any over anything it sets on. Correct? Mm -hmm. Unless you put a barrier, you put a roof, you put something, then that barrier will uh, eradicate the beam of the sun mm -hmm. or else it's a fr it, it beams freely upon everything it sets on even the wind the wind the waves of the ocean unless you put a barrier birds will fly freely animals will roam freely unless they are put in a cage mm -hmm. or taken and placed in a zoo or they're hunted down. Same thing with human beings. And Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu wa salam understood this. Yeah. That you can't cage people. You have to give them their freedom unless it goes against the law. Yeah. And that law in the government of Ali ibn Abi Talib was if you're harming others, if you harm another person, that's when you have broken a law. If you harm society, that's when you have broken a law and authority will stand against you. Mm -hmm. Or else, no, you're doing something in your own house. Far from everyone, authority will be far away from you. If you're not spreading mischief in society, or in the government, then you're a free man. And this is what Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdala salatu wa salam practiced. So when they told him we're going to Basra, even though he knew that they were committing treason, but he gave them the freedom to do so until they stood against the law. And until they stood against the law, and wanted to overthrow the power of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu wa salam and to lead a war against him and which they did. Yeah. They led a war against him and that war was the battle of Jamal, the battle of the camel. Mm -hmm. In an article between Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu wa salam with al-Mughayra bin Shu'bah. Mm -hmm. Al-Mughayra was one of the uh, the workers of Umar in his era of ruling and he also worked for Muawiyah as well so in the period of Umar he ruled over Kufa and at the time of Muawiyah I think after the shahadat of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu was salam, he ruled over Basra at the time of Imam al-Hassan. Mm -hmm. But when Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu was salam was in power, mm -hmm. he spoke to al-Mughayra bin Shu'bah. Mm -hmm. Of course, al-Mughayra bin Shu'bah, if you read his, his history, it's a black history. This guy was a thug, uh, very, very uh, horrible person. But of course, like uh, you know, people attract their their yeah. people who who, who are uh, lookalikes yeah. to them or similar to them. They have si similar traits to them. So Amir al Mu'minin alayhi afdal salatu wa salam tells him, "Will you be with me or Muawiyah? Right now, there is a battle going between us. You're either with me, I'm the Khalifa, or you're against me." So Al Mughayra bin Shu'ba says, Well, I will lay down my sword. I will neither fight for you or against you. 
Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afwala salatu wa salam says, Qad adhintu lak. Okay, I give you permission. You're a free man. And takuna ala ma bada lak. To do as you please, as you wish. Min ra'yin aw amalin. To have your own opinion or your own act. Illa an to see. Unless you're harming others. To see. Aw wa tu'adhi. Illa an to see wa tu'adhi. Unless you're harming others, then no. The hands of justice will come and get you. You want to lay down your sword? Don't fight for me or against me. You're a free man. I won't force you to do so. Because you can't make up your mind between who to stand with, mm -hmm. Ali or Muawiyah. I don't force you to do so. Mm -hmm. If that's your opinion, that's your wish, then go ahead. You're a free man. Even in, in, uh, when the Khawarij, uh, when Muawiyah put the Quran on spears, Ahsan. that's when they split the army of Ali Talib. They became the Khawarij. And uh, Malik al Ashar, his, his, his famous uh, words, he said, Ali in Quran Nataq, I heard Prophet Muhammad say that Ali is the Quran. Ahsan. And uh, But, you know, they, they still stood against him. But Ali Ibn Talib did not punish them. He's, he, he let them free. Ahsan. And that's how Muawiyah won, uh, you know, was not defeated in the battle. Yeah. They, didn't, they were uh, very close to being defeated mm -hmm. and destroyed. But with this uh, conniving move, yeah. they put the battle to an end. Mm -hmm. Another segment from Amir al Mu'mineen, alayhi wa salatu wa salam, to Malik al Ashtar. When Malik al Ashtar was the wali of Amir al Mu'mineen in Misr, mm -hmm. in Egypt, Amir al Mu'mineen, alayhi wa salatu wa salam, sends one of the most beautiful articles written ever in history yeah. to Malik al Ashtar. I haven't met a person who has read this piece and was not amazed by the words of Amir al-Mu'mineen, by the justice of Amir al-Mu'mineen, by the eloquence of Amir al-Mu'mineen, by the laws of Amir al-Mu'mineen, by the description of Amir al-Mu'mineen, how to govern, how to rule the rich class, the middle class, and the poor class, how a ruler should carry himself, how he should speak, how he should treat his Citizens, very beautiful piece by Amir al Mu'mineen. Amir al Mu'mineen tells Malik al Ashtar regarding the fourth law of uh, the doctrine of, of, of the man and citizens mm -hmm. in comparison. Amir al Mu'mineen tells Malik al Ashtar, in this matter, you should be enduring and watchful even though if it, it, it may involve your relations and favorites. <clears throat> you should watch your relations. And you shouldn't give someone a leverage mm -hmm. because he is related to you or he is your favorites mm -hmm. from your favorites. Everyone in your government should be equal. So if you're looking for a judge, it shouldn't be your cousin. It should be who actually deserves to be a judge. <clears throat> the head of police, it shouldn't be someone who is related to you or someone who has bribed you or someone that you favor. It should be based upon equality. Doesn't matter whether he's black or white, he's ugly or handsome, fat or skinny. No, it just depends upon whether he could carry the task or not. But today, even today in governments, what do we see? When a minister enters a ministry, his whole family goes into the ministry. Correct? Yeah. If someone in this government has a relative in a crucial position, then everyone in his family is benefiting. 
Yeah, definitely. And overnight, they're the richest families. The, in the rich, country. or they have power. Yeah, they have power. They could do whatever they want. And they abuse it. And they abuse it. You know, they become power, authority. Nobody can speak to them. Mm -hmm. Police can't speak to them. They're above the law. They're above the law. And this is what we see even today in our governments. Yeah. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdala salatu wa salam says, you have to give justice to everyone. Mm -hmm. There is no favorites or relations when it comes to position of power or governance mm -hmm. upon your citizens. Also, um, uh, a little segment uh, from the letter of Ali ibn Talib to Malik al-Ashtar, he states, uh, there are two kinds of people in this world, either a brother to you in religion Ascent. or a reflection to you in humanity. And this statement um, is a guideline for the United Ma Nations. Fi al yeah. or laka fi al -deen. And it's, it's a guideline for the, for the United Nations uh, right Ascent. now. Ascent. But it's, uh, it's, it's unfortunate to see that the, that the, actual, the, the West is, is, is actually pondering upon the sayings Ascent. of Ali ibn Talib but yet, I mean, the Muslim world keeps on de declining. Of course. That's because out of hate. Yeah. The West doesn't hate Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah. The West is willing to learn from any great mind. Definitely. But within the Muslims, there is hatred towards Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah. It's unfortunate to see that. I mean, why? Because he's the greater person. than them. Yeah. He's greater than their leaders. This is a different topic. Inshallah, yeah, we'll is, yeah, get into this topic, topic. Uh, another time. But even today, if you look at the time uh, of uh, King Abdullah in Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. who did most of his work? His brothers and cousins, there's rivalry between them. Correct? Mm -hmm. Because each one wants to be the king. So who becomes the king's aides? His mother's brothers and children. And same thing, as soon as Salman came into power, he removed all the aides of Abdullah, which were the brothers of, of, of the mother of Abdullah and their sons, the khals of, 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 uh, of, uh, of Abdullah, and he brought the brothers and the sons of the brothers of his mother. Wow. And that's how, basically, that's his cabinet, that's his everything of his government. That's what runs his government. So, is it based on uh, your credentials? Is it based on uh, where you've studied? You know, uh, you have a PhD, you have a master's? No, even in it's whose country. son you are. Yeah, even in this country, I mean. Even in this country. Yeah. Even in this country. What's even worse is that they, you know, they plagiarize or they just change their, uh, their resumes to, uh, you know, he has a PhD in psychology, oh, but, uh, he's a doctor. End, at at the end of the day, it's based upon whose son you are or yeah. who's uh, your relative in the government. Yeah. And that's basically <coughs> governments of today, all around the world, all around the world. It's based on, you know, whose son you are. Uh, or who you're related to. Is there equality and governance? Are all subjects, all your subjects, uh, you know, bound to have an occupation and equality? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether they're Christian, Jew, Muslim, yeah. whether they wear hijab, they don't wear hijab. But today, it's not. You remember what happened to the girl in the uh, about a month ago on, uh, in the American uh, Airlines, yeah. the lady didn't even give her a closed can because she wore a hijab. Or how many people do we know from our sisters or cousins that wear a hijab, they're not given opportunity to work yeah, in I Western mean, societies. The, the, the Bill of Human Rights were pa was passed after um, or during the 1950s, yet after 9-11, and uh, yeah, of course, all your rights are gone. All, all the rights are gone. I mean, all I'm a citizen, but yeah, gone. you know, we're not, we're not allowed, you know, but still, sorry, Satan, yeah. Uh, 
Then Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu wa salam says, and keep in view the reward of that which appears burdensome on you because it, its rewards are handsome. Yes, it might be difficult for you to, to give someone simple a job because he deserves it. But the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are handsome. They're great rewards because you have ruled an equality. Yeah. You have given all your subjects the right to gain an occupation and employment Definitely. in your govern government. Now we will move to the fifth law. Mm -hmm. And between the fourth and the fifth, there isn't much difference. Because it's all based upon whether you're harming others or not. If you're not harming anyone, mm -hmm. then you have been given freedom. Or if you're not breaking a government law. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yeah, the, second art uh, the fifth article uh, states that the law has the right to forbid only actions harmful to society. Uh, it's similar to, to, the, to the previous article. Anything which is not forbidden by the law uh, cannot be embedded and no one can be uh, constrained to what to do or in other words. Yes, very similar, it's very yeah, similar. They're, they're very similar, but this, it adds that uh, anything that's not uh, forbidden, forbidden. In, in, uh, by law, you can, uh, you know, you, you can do. But, and Ali bin Talib implemented this, you know, years, 12 uh, centuries before this. And it's significant to see how they learn from Ali Ibn Talib. Ascent. Yet we still, you know, this is we haven't learned. This was our introduction to the program. Yeah. Is where did they come up with these laws? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know they have read the words of Amir al Mumineen if yeah. it's in their, uh, you know, constitutions. Yeah. So they have uh, scholars that read every single book and every single publication, you know, from Adam until until now. And uh, we build our laws on, uh, on, on favors. So, uh, Amir al Mu'mineen, alayhi afdal salati wa salam, we just have to see how he implemented his rules and guidelines in his government. Okay. If it harms someone, if it harms someone, then there is authority to stand before you. If it doesn't harm society or your peers, then you're a free man. Thus, we see sometimes uh, Amir al Mu'mineen would punish based upon the person. Would the, this person. Uh, before punishment, was he sincere about forgiveness or not? Would uh, he go back to the same crime or he wouldn't? Sometimes people repent. They commit a crime, but they repent. And they will no longer be a harm to society. But sometimes if you let a criminal on the loose, Without punishing him, he will never see regret or remorse. And he will continue to commit his crimes yeah. as he wishes and he pleases. One day, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdala salati wa salam is in Masjid al-Kufa and he hears a cry, robber, robber, thief. Mm -hmm. And there is a gathering of people, like a circle of people. All of a sudden it scatters and there is screaming, thief, thief. So Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdala salatu wa salam tells them to bring this man to me. So uh, when Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdala salatu wa salam brings this man, he asks him, did you commit the robbery? And at first, he declines. He says, no. Amir al-Mu'mineen asks him again, 
Did you commit the robbery? He says, yes, but it was my first time. Amir al-Mu'mineen says, no, no, by Allah, this wasn't your first time because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His justice would not allow him and His mercy would not allow him to reveal someone on his first sin. We see that in our own lives. This is your 40th time that you have committed the sin and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed you. This man falls into tears. He says, yes, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, you're right. This is my 40th time. At this time, this man must be punished. It's not his first time. If he's not punished, people will learn from him in society. Crime will spread in society. And he would never learn. Definitely. So Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu wa salam punishes him. And his hand is amputated. This man carries his amputated arm and he goes, sits in one of the streets, one of the alleyways. And one of the enemies of Amir al-Mu'mineen in Kufa overhears this man mm-hmm. praising Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa salatu wa salam. He's shocked. He comes and tells him, he cut off your hand and you're praising him? He says, yes, why shouldn't I praise a just ruler? Mm-hmm. I deserved what I deserved. Yeah, even with the punishment. Still I deserved it. Yeah. This is reality. Amir al-Mu'mineen is the most just ruler to rule after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Yeah, he was happy about that. So he told him, who cut off your hand? Mm-hmm. And this man started to remind him of the virtues of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa fadal salatu wa salam. He says, فَقَالَ لَيْثُ الْحَجَاز The lion of the Arabian Peninsula cut off my hand. It wasn't a normal man. وَكَبْشُ الْعِرَاقِ وَمَصَادِمُ الْأَبْطَالِ The person who destroyed the bravest of men. This is not a normal man. I wasn't put under punishment by some normal man. This is Ali ibn Abi Talib. الْمُنْتَقِمُ مِنَ juhal, The person who stood against arrogance and those who worshipped idols. كَرِيمُ الْأَصْلِ This person came from a pure lineage, unlike all of you that I know. Yeah. This man came from a pure lineage. Sharif al Fadl, Mahal al Haramain, Warith al Mashra'ain, Abu al Sibtain. He's the father of Al Hassan and Hussein. Awwal al Sabiqeen. He was the first person to, 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 to become Muslim. As soon as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi started his message, Ali was the first man to believe and the first man to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Wa akhirul wasiyyin min Ali Yaseen. And the last disciple from Ali Yaseen, the household of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Al Mu'ayyad bi Jibra'il, the person who is aided by Jibra'il. Al-Mansoor by Mika'il. The person whose second aid is, is Mika'il. This is not a normal man. This man is the vicegerent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon humans and the sons of Adam. What happened to me was a divine law, yeah. was a divine ruling. And Ali ibn Abi Talib, Set that rule upon me. Al Hablu al Mateen, Al Mahfuz, Bijund al Sama'i Ajma'een, Wadalik Yawallah Amir al Mu'mineen. And that is the Prince of the Believers. Amir al Mu'mineen overheard the words of this man. Imam Hassan alayhi salam was walking through the alley and he heard the voice of this man, the words of this man. 
he went to his father Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu was salam and he told him, Oh my father, this man is praising you even though you punished him. This man truly loves you. Even though he had committed a mistake, he's a criminal. But his heart is pure. Yeah, he's, he's full of love. He's filled with love for you. And Allah. my father, your enemies have surrounded him. And they are telling him, you were punished by the person you love. Oh my father, we are not a family that punishes those who love them. Amir al-Mu'mineen told Imam Hassan to go call upon this man. He went and called him. He told him, go call him with respect. Address him by uncle. Amir, Imam Hassan alayhi afdal salatu was salam went to him and he told him, Oh my uncle, come to us. My father is summoning you to his masjid, Masjid al-Kufa. This man carries his hand and he walks towards Amir al-Mu'mineen. Amir al-Mu'mineen grabs a small piece of rug and he wraps this man's hand back where it was and he recites a prayer, two unit prayer and asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give this man his hand. He removes the cloak and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows the Muslims a miracle conducted by Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu was salam. But it shows you justice. Punishment was placed when it needed to be placed. Punishment was placed by Amir al-Mu'mineen <coughs> upon this thief. And in another instance, a woman comes to Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu was salam. You know, occasions like this occurred many times in the lifetime of Amir al-Mu'mineen, especially during his time of leadership and khilafah, mm -hmm. where someone would come to Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu was salam and he or she would tell the Imam to purify them from their sins if they had committed adultery or fornication. And Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu was salam would tell, would tell them to go. Why? Because the ruling in Islam for the punishment to occur, four just witnesses have to witness the act. Mm -hmm. So if a person comes and says, I have committed this act for the first time, Islamic ruling cannot be placed. So Amir al-Mu'mineen knows that this person is coming because he has repented or wants repentance. Mm -hmm. There is remorse in his heart. Amir al-Mu'mineen would usually tell them to, to go to go and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and to never go back to the sin. This woman comes to Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu was salam and she tells him, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, I want to be purified from my sin. I have committed adultery and I'm pregnant at the moment from that sin. Right now if it was Boko Haram or Daesh, they would throw her from, on, from the top of a cliff without even seeing were there witnesses, there weren't witnesses. It's, it's different with them. They just blame, even if they don't know. If, even if... So Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu was salam tells her, go until you give birth. Go, there is a child in your stomach. Go give birth and then we'll see what happens. Months pass, days pass, this woman comes back to Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu was salam and she tells him, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, I've given birth, yeah. purify me. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salatu was salam turns to her, he says, go breastfeed him for two years, breastfeed him for two years and then come and we'll see what happens. You know, he knows this lady will never harm anyone else or spread mischief in society ever again. She's coming over and over again. 
because she fears the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who have committed the sin on the day of judgment. Two years pass. She comes back to Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi afdal salati wa salam. And she tells him, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, two years have passed. Purify me. He tells her, Go until your son is old enough to take care of himself. Basically, he's giving her time for repentance. Giving her time for repentance. And he knows she will never harm anyone in society ever again. So if she had committed a mistake or a crime that didn't harm anyone, then it's between her and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's between her and her Lord and her favor towards repentance. Subhanallah. I mean, when we hear um, such stories, we find that Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him, um, was not just a regular person who ruled a regular government. I mean, until now, um, scholars and even scientists, um, they use Ali ibn Abi Talib's government as a, as a role, as a role model uh, for them to, to, to guide their nations. I mean, we see that um, the United Nations also use the words of Ali ibn Abi Talib um, to, you know, to act justly. Um, but when we see the justice of Ali ibn Abi Talib, um, and the man that he cut off his hand. Uh, there's a similar story with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. A man committed adultery and came to Rasulullah. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I've committed adultery. Uh, the so young man? The young man. So he turned away from him. Um, told him, don't tell me, yeah, go. Just go. And he so turned Allah away. Repent. He turned to Prophet Muhammad and said it again. And he, Rasulullah did the same thing. And the third time, he said, now I have to um, punish, you know, you. Uh, punish you. Because you occurred it upon yourself. Yeah, I mean, it, it would have been better for you to go and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instead of you know, broadcasting it or telling me. I mean, sins are not there for us to, um, to, you know, to, to share with others. To, to share with others. The only the, person or that could uh, forgive us is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best way, I mean, you know, we're going off topic, but the best way, in short, the best way to ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through Ahlul Bayt. And inshallah, may Allah forgive us. But uh, sorry, Sayyidina. Uh, and the please. last part I want to mention uh, in tonight's program is going back to segment four. And mm -hmm. also, it uh, also has to do with... Uh, Segment five, mm -hmm. giving the opportunity to all your subjects to employment. This was known about Uthman bin Affan, that as soon as he came into power, all of Bani Umayyah came into power. Whether they were righteous men, but I don't know there was one from Bani Umayyah that was a righteous man. He brought all of them, all his cousins, his family members. And that's how Muawiyah came into power. Yeah. It, in his time of ruling, it became so bad that his cousins and family members took advantage of the Muslims and the wealth of the Muslims that ended up in his killing. Yeah. For example, Uthman brought one of his cousins his, na his name was Al-Walid bin Uqbah. Al-Walid bin Uqbah was, was, was a known alcoholic. And he had placed him as the Khalifa or the, uh, the ruler of Kufa. This man would drink, fornicate and steal the Muslims money. Openly and publicly. Yeah. Yeah, Amir al muminin sent Malik al ashtar to Uthman, told him you either change your cousin or we'll have to do something about it. Because a leader of, a Mus of, of the Muslims cannot carry such traits. Definitely. This man is an alcoholic and 
everybody in Kufa knows. He takes advantage of the Muslims, the wealth of the Muslims. And there's nothing about him that says, I am Muslim. Yeah, he drank publicly. He drank publicly. So Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdala salatu wa salam kept repeating to Uthman, change him. And Uthman was taking it into consideration until another mal'oon came to Uthman and brainwashed him, Marwan ibn al-Hakam. Mm -hmm. He came and he told uh, Uthman, no, 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 you don't have to worry, keep, keep him. Keep Al-Walid, Al-Walid ibn Uqba, there is no problem with it. Why? Because they were cousins, they were family, and they were all benefiting. Mm -hmm. And Uthman changed his decision from moving such a, uh, a man who was so far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to rule over the Muslims. But this is what we see in Islamic heritage, Islamic history, and the, uh, and the history of the Muslims. Yeah. And history repeats itself it's till today. It's unfortunate to see that. It's very unfortunate because when we, when we examine, I mean, the lives of Ahlul Bayt and compare them, you know, because they, when Prophet Muhammad was on his deathbed, um, he told the Ummah, if you, um, you know, follow the two, my Ahlul Bayt and the Quran, uh, you will not be led astray after me. Um, but yet, their, um, their wills for this materialistic world and love uh, for this world made them blind. Said. It's for, for, for no reason. I mean, now, wh where are they right now? I mean, when uh, that great uh, Christian poet who uh, went to visit Ali ibn Talib in Najaf and he went to Syria to see where Muawiyah was, and he would just, it was just, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a washroom. And he told, you know, he, his, his famous uh, poetry lines. You see the Imams, they're alive through the pilgrims of Imam <laughs> Hussein through the shrine of Imam Hussein, the shrine of Abbas alayhi salam. Millions of people fall, uh, visit them annually. And you see Muawiyah, Yazid, and people of their likes embedded till today in whom? ISIS. Yeah. You don't see anyone else praising Muawiyah or Yazid besides ISIS members or uh, being proud to support them or to follow them. Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird to see that. I mean, we see, um, not to mention anyone, you know, but a uh, small example is uh, the, guy, the, the scholar in Syria, what's his name? With the orange Lar -ur, beard, Lar -ur. Lar -ur. <laughs> I mean, one time on TV, um, he said, uh, why uh, when uh, Al Mahdi, may Allah hasten, he doesn't say, may Allah hasten his reappearance, he says Al Mahdi. Why, when he reappears, um, he, uh, he kills Bani Umayyah? We are Bani Umayyah. What have we done to him? I mean, they say it out loud yeah, of course. that they are Bani Umayyah and they fight against the Shia who, who you know, they follow the justice of Ali ibn Talib. Of course, their they, lineage is still, still apparent. Definitely, but you know. Sufyani uh, will be from the lineage of, 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 Bani, of, Umayyah. of Bani Umayyah. SubhanAllah. So it's uh, the fruitful tree, the pure tree. And the tree of, of, of monkeys. And the tree of evil. Yeah. Monkeys that were playing on uh, the pulpit of Rasulullah. Uh, so Sayyidina, we're coming to a conclusion of the episode. Inshallah. Uh, if you would like to conclude or... Inshallah. Inshallah, we'll continue the message of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa salatu wa salam. Inshallah. For the nights to come. Uh, if uh, our view viewers have any question, I'm sure they could send... Uh, Definitely. Send uh, to your email or uh, to the channel's email. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is the email address for uh, uh, the channel if uh, people want to inquire questions or uh, anything? Info at uh, Hussein 3 uh, TV, uh, dot TV. Dot TV, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Our viewers, uh, we're looking uh, forward to your questions and inshallah. comments. May Allah bless you all. And inshallah, 
We send you peace from the shrine of Imam Hussein. Inshallah. Thank you very much, Sayyidina, for joining us tonight. And uh, thank you very much, respected viewers, for uh, tuning in for, uh, for tonight. Uh, I hope, inshallah, we can learn uh, from the justice of Adam Nabi Talib to not oppress anyone and to abide by the rules of Islam and the rules of Ahlul Bayt, uh, uh, As Sayyid mentioned, if you have any question, you can also um, inbox us on Facebook at Imam Hussein 3 tv uh, also on Twitter and YouTube. Uh, leave a comment or view the previous episodes. Stay tuned for the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidina.